This segment of Naperville Sports Weekly is brought to you in part by the Naperville Sun. Neco Valley Girls Gymnastics Coach Joanne Shigoda, we're here in the gym. It's your first year here at the head of the program. You've been a, an assistant years past. How, how does that role kind of change from where you stand now that you're just about through the completion of your first full season here as the head coach? Uh, it really, you know, more accountability. I think the girls kind of look to you for more of the answers, so a little bit more lies on your shoulders instead of, you know, just coming into the gym coaching. Also the parents, um, you know, coming working together with some of the administration on invites and other meets. We're hosting regionals next week. So it's a lot more coordination than just coming in, coaching, and, and then, you know, kind of ending your day. Where would you kind of assess the Wildcats right now to kind of where you expected them to be when the year began? Well, uh, knowing that we had lost uh, a couple seniors last year and having only two seniors this year, really wasn't sure. We've had some um, freshmen really step into the varsity role and do really well for us. Emily Jacobs and Isis Ruff have come out of club gymnastics, um, so I was pleasantly surprised having some, some new growth and, and some depth in the team, being that they were freshmen coming in. Um, you know, we're always looking to the next challenge and the next meet, um, and, and we've had our, you know, bouts with injuries. That's been a little bit tough, um, but I'm, I'm looking to see what we're going to, you know, end up with at conference. I'm hoping that it's going to be one of the bigger meets mm -hmm. for us. Uh, we had hit some of the upper 130s earlier in the season and have tapered off mm -hmm. just a little bit, but uh, kind of looking to see what we're going to be able to pull together on Saturday and then next week. You talked about you know the youth of this team, but you do have one senior who's been really strong this year, almost all year, Riley Wipazinski. She seems to kind of provide a foundation for this team. We, we see the scores. What are, what are some things maybe here in the room, maybe maybe on the bus, what are some other things that she, she provides as one of those seniors? Well, as, I mean, she's been strong this year, and she's been strong every year that I've you know been here as well. She's been uh, on the team for the last four years. I've had the opportunity to coach her for three, but uh, just a foundational leadership person. Um, not always the most outspoken person, but a very sometimes silent leader. Uh, just her example and her work ethic in the gym is incredible. You know, she comes in every day, um, just willing to, to do anything she can to, to take it to the next level for herself. And she's always looking to do more and, and raise the bar for herself. So that's huge. Um, and just even outside of the gym, helping, you know, being that strong teammate, trying to encourage other people, um, you know, whether it's just cheering them on, um, helping some of the younger girls get acclimated to the team sport and, and working together. The girls here do a lot inside the gym and also outside the gym together. So it's a nice, really nice group of girls to work with. You talked about Emily and Isis as two of the freshmen that have kind of really made a big impact. What is it about kind of that adjustment that some of these club gymnasts have to make when, when they come into the high, the high school gymnastics? Because it's definitely a different environment. It is. Uh, I would say club gymnastics is really more focused on the individual gymnast. We're in high school, we really work on the team and coming together and it's not just about your own score and your own routine all the time. It's really how do we all work together and how do all the pieces fit and we're here for each other and to support each other and to learn from each other and without kind of everybody pulling in that direction you know it, it, it can go bad quickly um, and sometimes you struggle with that when you've got a you know new dynamics coming in or new coaches we also have a new assistant coach this year um, we have a and he's a, a male from Lake Park where you know he he's coached and had gymnastics experience um, so it's been a different dynamic altogether whether it's coaching or with gymnasts so um, but you know for the most part it's been it's been fantastic and Emily is the one that's really as of late been putting up some really big scores in the all-around lately mm -hmm. you know we saw her at the beginning of the year at the Hornet invite and she seemed to maybe be a little bit more raw you know had one or two specialties but what's she been able to do to kind of improve and get those marks higher and higher as we've gotten to December into January where we are now. Right. I think it's come down to confidence. Um, coming in probably as a freshman, you know, you don't have the experience. You might not know what to expect. Um, but I think having more meets under her belt now and more invites and being a part of the varsity team, uh, she's really been able to build more confidence. And the more you hit and the more consistent you get, I think it just helps in terms of the scores. You know what you, what you need to do when you go out there. And she's been able to do that. 
conference here at the end of the week, you know, regionals next week, obviously everything that follows that with the state series. This is the time of year where people are really fine tuning in gymnastics. Any, any, but any new skills, any uh, new tricks out of the bag, maybe we'll see at conference or regionals here in the um, next week or so? Well, we're trying, we're trying. You know, there's some of the, the times where you don't know if you should really start, you know, tweaking things just yet and adding something that you haven't been working on and, and just kind of seeing how it'll go in a big meet. Um, so you definitely want to stay consistent, but um, you know, being able to tweak a little bit here and there, hopefully there might be a couple of surprises maybe on floor, if it's just an added you know, twist or salto and a tumbling pass, just to help kind of raise those scores and raise the bar a little bit for ourselves be looking out for it. Uh, as we've uh, seen some of the invites you guys have been in this year, you know, the Candy Cane invite, Homewood Flossmore, the one at Hinsdale South at the beginning of the year, you guys are doing quite well at some of these prestigious invites, really on the cusp, a lot of top five finishes, but you guys didn't really break through this year. What do you, what do you think, you know, you guys need to do to do exactly that here uh, as we move into conference, move into regionals? Right. Um, well, we, we've got to stay consistent. It comes down, I think, to practice every day. Um, you can't come in and, and just kind of fly by the seat of your pants and expect to go and do a big meet and do well. So it's not just, you know, hoping that it, it's going to come into place for you, but it's putting in the time and the hard work. And really, it's, it's about no excuses, in my opinion. Um, you, you've, got to, you've got to do the work. And uh, sometimes it's getting through the aches and pains. And it's tough at the end of the year. You know, their bodies go through a lot. We don't wear pads. You know, there's nothing really out there to protect us. We have some mats. But, you know, these girls put a lot. And the sport has changed. And really, you know, it's, it's pretty dangerous when they're, you know, landing continually day after day. So to try and, you know, stay strong, whether it's physically and or mentally sometimes, is the biggest thing. And to know that there's not a lot of time left. But, you know, they've got to kind of come together and uh, make sure they're taking care of themselves outside of the gym as well. Um, and then I think they'll be able to do all right. And you talked about the team aspect of things, is staying focused. How much do, does it help, does it hurt that, you know, going into this conference meet, you guys are tied with a very friendly rival in the Wabonzi Co-op that these girls know well, you guys as a coaching staff know really well. Is that a little bit of motivation thrown in there as well that, you know, you guys want to take something away from them that, you know, they've been quite good at the at this conference the past couple of years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, you, like you said, it's a friendly rival, but of course, we'd want to go in and say, you know, kind of take those bragging rights and say, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's ours to, to win and it's ours to lose as well. So they've definitely been, you know, the one loss we've had in conferences to Wabonzi Matia. So we definitely would like to come out on top for conference. I mean, Geneva's also, you know, a player in that and we've gone back and forth in the last couple of years. We were able to beat them this year in conference. Um, I do believe they may have won the conference meet last year mm -hmm. um, and we had won it the year before that. So it's, it's going to be, you know, kind of a battle towards the end. Uh, and then we'll see Wabonzi again in the regional. So they're not going anywhere, but so it, it definitely needs to be a motivation for them, you know. But it's also friendly because a lot of the girls, you know, together had competed together before the, the boundary lines changed. So, and they come from a lot of the same clubs, so. Definitely, you mentioned the regional, it's going to be right here where we're at now. How much of a factor does that kind of play in where these guys, you know, you mentioned Wabonzi's gonna be here. I imagine that adds a little bit of a comfort factor as well that, you know, they're in the place they practice every day. And it's got to have them feeling a little bit better, you know, when that competition comes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, when you're kind of, it's like home field advantage, you know, you, you know the equipment, you know where the settings are, and you don't have to worry about that sometimes going into a new gym or a new facility, which is nice. So you've got that, and you've got to use that to your advantage. You know how it all works, and now it's just your time to shine. What's the goal for you guys as a coaching staff here going into these crucial two weeks? What, what, do, you, what do you want the girls to get out of, you know, this uh, big time here? Their best effort, you know, kind of bottom line is if, if you're trying and you're being supportive and you're giving your best effort mentally and physically and for your teammates, you know, we want them to go out and have a good time. But it needs to be at their highest level that they're capable of and just to tie it all up right now. And, uh, you know, it's kind of those, those end couple of meets to see where we are going to end up. But... We want them to, to continue to want to learn and want to grow as gymnasts and as individuals and to want to come back and do it again next year. Definitely. Well, I can see the girls are working on their skills right now. We'll let you get back to it. Coach, okay. thanks for letting us come by, and uh, good luck here over the next couple weeks. All right, great. Thanks so much. Appreciate it.